part. My module of the month this month is config parser. All right. Oh, uh, for all the pros in the room, it's in lowercase in Python 3. In Python 2, it was config with a capital C and P with a capital P. Right, so uh, who here knows what an any file is? Right? Kind of. Let me just type one out. Let me print you. Right? So any file basically is uh, you have what's called sections. Every section header is between these square brackets here. And then uh, in each section, you'll have variables with a value, okay? So separated by an equal or a colon. So in this case, I have two sections, one called DB, one called app. I don't know, maybe if I'm trying to configure a web app. In my DB, I'll have a variable called host, a variable called port, app. I have this little comment, so this comment is just for me. Uh, it's not read in the configuration file. It's ignored by most part, by the good parsers and it's just for, for my edification, right? And then a variable, right? So um, any files is basically, go figure, a way to store configuration, as opposed to uh, a lot of people would say use JSON. Uh, some people, others might use XML. Um, the, the glory and the, the, the benefit of any files is that they're very, very simple to write out to, and to use. And arguably, compared to, say, uh, JSON, you can put comments in it, uh, and the parsing is a bit friendlier, uh, a bit less error prone. But uh, let's see how we can use any files in Python. So I import config parser. Oh, excuse me. Woo. A little cheat sheet. Uh, so I don't, I don't type these from memory. I have to uh, read them from a sheet. Uh, so I call, create what's called a config. Uh, uh, I create my config parser object by calling it. So I'm just going to call it config. And config is going to read a configuration. So here it's going to read string. This is the any file as a string that I typed out uh, earlier. And suddenly I have a config with all the sections I had in my any file. And I can list the keys in that section. So my DB, I wound up with my host and my port, and finally I can get to that. So in this case, it has a key host and port. Um, I want username. Username's not there, so I'm gonna give it a default value, and like a regular Python dictionary using the get uh, method, it'll return me my default value, right? Uh, do note that uh, the very, uh, all, everything's a string, right? So this is a dictionary of strings in config files. So example, my port is now a string. If I want to use it in, a configure, in, my, in my database library and in it as an int, I'll have to cast it myself, right? You only get strings. And also, <laughs> gloriously, it is also not um, case sensitive. You know, keep things easy. Uh, so for example, my admin email, all in lower case, as opposed to my actual variable, which is admin with a capital A, capital A, still pick up uh, the thing. So make sure you don't have two variables that are the same if you lower case them and all that. But other than that, you know, keep it easy, keep it simple, keep it 1980s. <laughs> and um, also, uh, also works as the uppercase. Both will match to the same uh, variable. Um, What's good about config parser is, let's say I have another configuration, right? So here I have, let me print this out for you. So I have a section called DB, like I had above, and I have another variable, port. Now this time it's 6432, not the 5432. Well, in my config, I just read it again, and it'll update the, the proper section. So if I try to get my port, you'll get my new value, again the string, but I still have access to all the old values I had in my previous config file, right? Um, why would this be useful? Well, let me write out these, uh, these, these configuration files to, file to, to disk, right? So this is my main, and let's say I call the other one local, right? Well, one really, really cool method is config, I call on you, so I'll create an empty one, and config.read, right? And to read, I pass a list of files, right? So in this case, I have main, which I just wrote, local, which I just also wrote, and say testing. Testing doesn't exist, but it might be there, it might be there on certain servers that I have, it might be on my CI server, right? I call that, it'll tell me, oh, these are the any files I found. Oh, you passed one I didn't find, I didn't raise an error, I just ignored it, no, uh, 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 no pressure. And I'll give you, uh, the, 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 uh, I'll give you the variables 
from uh, the, sorry, I will first of all load all the variables from this one and then overwrite all the ones that I find in this one. So it found this DB host from the first one and it finds the port from the second one and you're none the wiser. So you can layer on configuration files. So maybe you have like a main one and then you'll have uh, a local configuration for local development or your testing or integration server might have a different uh, configuration. You can layer those with these and not have to worry, oh, do I have to copy on every one? Am I missing this variable? And keep it simple like that. And uh, that's basically it.